right? So I think pragmatically that may be one way to achieve that. Um, I know in t having conversations with the uh, uh, planners from the Egyptian government looking to next year, they are actively uh, looking to attract governments from not just the North Africa and the Gulf region, but throughout the entire African region. Um, and part of it is geographic and the cost of travel. So that's another reason why the meetings move and rotate in different regions. Uh -huh. Very briefly. Um, I just want to uh, make some remarks in response to the first question that we had from Wolfgang. Um, he said that I'd uh, misread WIGIG's um, uh, position on the IGF. In fact, there was quite a lot of variance within WIGIG on how extensive the IGF's role should be. But I think it's a mistake to um, pitch it as a, a polar or a binary distinction between a pure forum function and a policy development function on the other hand, because really that's a continuum which goes from soft to hard power. And all I'm suggesting is that we need to move a little further along that continuum as the IGF develops. And uh, it has been suggested that the dynamic coalitions can and the workshops can make recommendations and, and I think that's absolutely right. That's something that they should be encouraged to do. But then there's a missing link because as we heard from the first gentleman from government who spoke, um, governments don't know how, what to take out of the IGF because it's all too diffuse and decentralised. So I think we need to have a mechanism that links the dynamic coalitions and workshops to the plenary forum of the IGF so that governments can actually in one, in one place find the, the outputs that they need to take upstream uh, into other institutions that do have decision making power. Next uh, comment from the floor. Yes, um, my wife, when uh, Wolfgang said, when Wolfgang said that uh, uh, the discussions here are meant to inspire policy making, uh, I think it's necessary that we have uh, a formal rep reporting process. Uh, the uh, workshops, once they are agreed upon or they, they have been accepted by the secretariat and the uh, the MEG. I think they should work together with the sponsors of the workshop to uh, provide a formal a, a mechanism of for reporting, where at we, I mean the participants and also those who were not able to make it to the forum to the meeting, they can at least uh, see the highlights, the, the the different ideas that have been proposed on that specific issues, and if in any consensus or any progress has been made. Uh, that should be uh, a report as well, so that when the government's delegate or any stakeholder they come and they try to attend the different workshops going on parallelly, they can still have a place to go back and see the progress that has been made by the discussion. Because if we just come and discuss without having any, uh, any mechanism to, to monitor uh, the progress we are making on those issues, that won't help. Okay. Uh, Th thanks, Milwaukee. In its breach, then uh, followed uh, religiously so far in these first years. Uh, certainly, uh, that's uh, another concrete step that would probably assist the governments and all participants. Uh, next question from the floor. Um, hello, my name is Ram. From Sri Lanka, there is a uh, one ISOC ambassador. Only two people that uh, we get ch uh, chance, and other organizations they didn't take the initiative to increase the participation from South uh, South Asia. So there must be increase the participation from developing countries, from developing organizations as well as a government participation, because government participation must this program must be integrated with the annual government program. If we can integrate with the annual government program, then we can achieve the even the Millennium Development Goals or whatever agendas we can achieve. Thank you. Okay, so if I understood correctly, your suggestion was to have governments plan for participation. Do you, do you want to comment? Uh, I think that uh, your, your comment was towards regional balance, right? And I think it's a relevant point. Um, uh, um, in different processes that uh, there are programs for, for fellowships, sometimes it is privileged people which is closer to the meeting. Uh, I, I strongly disagree with that. I think it should be a regional balance, doesn't matter if it's a long ticket plane, very expensive, or, or a short one because it's very close. A regional and, and gender balance should be a uh, privilege. And uh, now that I have the floor, I would like to make a comment about government participation, especially developing uh, governments and developing countries. The issue of 
relevance of internet governance, it, it's important. Uh, usually developing countries have other urgencies. Uh, to be solved very quickly in the short term. And this makes it really very difficult when we return to our countries and, and we try to do the best and, and, and explain what is going on about internet governance and the evolution of internet and policies and all that. We already have, I think, some mechanisms, local and regional. Um, but it's difficult to move away from, from what is urgent today maybe a financial crisis or hunger or a strike and and to put this into the scope of the people who is really making decisions especially in developing countries good point are there more questions or comments from the floor do i see any hands coming up no, I think we have a few minutes then to uh, to wrap up, and if there are some final questions uh, before we close, let me just try to wrap up myself, and then I'll invite everyone else up here to uh, give an alternate version of what we've just uh, discussed. Um, so we, we've heard several suggestions on, well, there, I guess there's some difference in views on what exactly the role and mandate originally was, and there's uh, different views on how successful or not uh, the Internet Governance Forum has been uh, thus far in fulfilling uh, the mandate as it's been uh, variously defined. Uh, there's been a, a number of concrete suggestions on ways to improve uh, the, the process for the forum going forward, including uh, one, ensuring that there's a regular reporting back mechanisms for recommendations or at least workshop summaries. Uh, some of us have even uh, drawn uh, straw polls in meetings like this. Might be a step too far uh, for some. And uh, let me see if there's, uh, uh, th there's been a wide recognition on the significance of the IGF in a, as a sort of soft power um, oversight mechanism, but more than that also as a, uh, a form in which public policy as well as sort of practical solutions for governments both at the global level and at a comparative national level come forward. So that's my brief summary. I invite others up here to uh, bring up any issues that uh, they think I've missed in that very brief summary. Okay, and any further comments from the floor on uh, things that I've left out? Wow. Oh, yes, Guru. Microphone. Just, there was a suggestion on the democratic deficit. The word would be yours, Lee. I'll uh, briefly comment on. I think it's obvious that you can't reach the next last billion without going through the next billion. The issue is not that. The issue is the framework with which we see the, this space. And that's why I said belief in public policy and understanding what's public policy. Public policy goals are stated in form different than market strategies are stated. And I think we need to bring a framework of public policy thinking to this. I mean, market is a great institution, but they're public institutions, and we need to respect what is public institution and speak in terms of public policy issues in the language of public policies uh, you public policy issues are framed in and i think that that that's the context here uh, the isoc ambassador uh, from sri lanka Nepal. Mentioned the issue of participation. I think there's something which we are not looking at. India has a very political, very strong civil society out here in Hyderabad. They are not coming and it doesn't cost anything to come in here because the issues which you keep on saying is about internet development have not been framed in the way they want it to be framed. And we have consistently refused to frame the issues. Funding is an issue of participation, but that something should be done about it. But issues, I mean, it's very, it's, it's a wrong thing to say that you don't understand the issue which concerns you. It's not true. We didn't frame the issue in the way he, he wants to have, have it framed. And if we start framing the issues rightly, there will be participation. And this, uh, this is a challenge we should take. There are no controversial issues. The very basis of democracy and openness is that if it's controversial, let's come out and discuss it. We should choose the most controversial ones. That's public policy discussion. And this is something we should decide uh, to do from here on. And I'll give you a small issue which can bring everybody to this place. What is internet today? The definition of internet is under threat. The people who said, you are on internet if you use IP address, even if I just have a single line of communication to the next person. 
Is the technical requirement of IP internet or are there some essential characteristics of openness and neutrality or something which defines internet which we are trying to defend? If you throw this issue out to discussion on a public policy forum, there are other pe different people having a different view. You're trying to do something and there would be people flocking in to talk about it. And I think we need to frame issues in a way that concern people and, and they, they participate. I think, Parminder, you did uh, get the final word uh, since we're out of time here. But I want to thank our panelists for their contributions and suggestions and, uh, and I, all of your, for your comments as well. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, this afternoon as we bring some of these ideas into the role going forward session. Uh, thanks, and we'll see you hopefully again in Egypt. Bye.